I'm going to show you how I edit photos um, for sale. This is my way of doing it. You might have your own way. Just discover it and whatever works for you, great. Uh, I'm not saying this is the correct way or the best way. Everybody has their own style. And uh, I'm selling photos since 2008, so it's 10 years already. And in 2015 and 16, I was trying to find a way to sell them better. better. And I, I managed to do that by implementing a couple of steps in the workflow and a couple of software too. So um, I think you're going to like it. I think um, I, I'm going to say some things that will be helpful to all of you guys. And uh, let's just not uh, talk longer. Uh, ask me any questions that you have. Just type them in the chat. It will take about 10 to 15 seconds for the information to get from me to you because YouTube has to process the video that I'm streaming and then serve it to you. So when you type a question in the chat, I will see it right away. But then by the time I answer, uh, the, the answer will get to you with some delay. So just be patient. I'm keeping the chat here so I can see it and I'm working on, on the left monitor. So if I don't see the question right away, no worries, I'm going to see it. I'm going to take a look at the chat every few minutes to see if you ask me anything. Let me just sip my coffee. <clears throat> okay. Today I prepared two or three images for you. I'm not sure how much we're going to uh, manage to edit because I want to explain step by step, right? So let's let's start with the first one. So this is a raw image, Nikon raw image for my from my old Nikon D80, and uh, this image. Let me just see why it's not okay. It's opening. So I took this image in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, <clears throat> at a sunset. It's just a regular sunset. Nothing special about this image. However, somebody might use this one um, as a background, right? Although we have to do a couple of things with it first. Uh, what I really want to do is remove these people here and these umbrellas. We don't need them. There is one person here, right? And then I want to straighten up the horizon. Uh, I want to remove these leaves that are hanging from nowhere. Let me... Oh, I'm covering the part of the image. Okay. So I want to remove these leaves here that are hanging from nowhere. And... Uh, and that's about it. Maybe intensify colors, maybe add some sun rays here, but we'll we'll see about that um, as we work. So this is Lightroom, right? This is Lightroom. Uh, Camera Raw, actually, which is the same like Lightroom, uh, has a lot of same functions. This panel is the same. If you work with Adobe Lightroom, this is going to look very familiar to you. If you look with Photoshop, when you open Raw images, they will open in this program called Camera Raw. That's even better than you know this, you know this panel completely. So first thing that I'm always doing when I'm um, editing my photos is check uh, for the sharpness because uh, if the photo is not sharp, <laughs> I mean, we can try to sharpen it a little bit, but um, if, it's, if it's too blurry, then I just skip it and go to another one. So for, to check for sharpness, I'm going to zoom it. Um, I usually, I like to use shortcuts on the keyboard. Control plus will zoom the image and zoom it until you see 100% here. 100% here is important because that's the size, that's the zoom that reviewers on Shutterstock and other uh, stock uh, photo websites will be used to check the photo. If the photo is sharp, at this zoom, you're fine. Uh, sometimes if you zoom it to 200%, the photo might look blurry and you might think, oh, this is bad. But actually, don't do that. So be careful. See, go only to 100% here. So to me, this photo looks fine. Um, it's sharp enough. Of course, you can always expect uh, some blurriness around the corners because, you know, a camera lens is not perfect so what is important for you to know is that your photo will be rejected if let's say the main subject of the photo is blurry uh, in this case we don't really have a main subject 
those palm trees are here if there was some I don't know let's say imagine there was a ship here and the ship is blurry the photo will probably be rejected however however in this case uh, we have only palm trees and in the background so uh, the photo looks fine what I always do when I check for the sharpness I click these two little squares here uh, this part of uh, camera raw and later in Photoshop you will see the same thing is called histogram this is showing you how much of the mid-tones light tones and shadows are present in the image you see as I'm moving the cursor different areas get grayed out right so, so that's basically showing you this uh, left side of the histogram those are shadows and you can see a big spike there which means that this picture has a lot of shadows and then mid tones and then uh, light tones less represented right so there's a big spike in shadows and there are these light and mid tones that are less represented in the image so what I always why I actually do turn on these squares I want to equalize this image to look more even to brighten up the shadows and to get some details in these light areas when I click on these squares they will show me what I'm doing and I'll show you how uh, let's say I grab this highlights uh, slider <laughs> let's push it to the right as I'm pushing it to the right you might notice red areas showing here let me show you better and even here so this is showing us this is showing us where we where are we starting to lose the details in the image this is important because these areas now are completely blown out they don't have any details and when reviewers find those areas they might reject your image uh, if I push this white slider to the right those areas are bigger right so if I click done or open image now these areas will completely be blown out you will n you will not have any details there so you have to avoid that so let's bring back uh, whites to zero that's default okay so to get more details in in the highlights area you have to push the highlight slider to the left and look at the look at the sky here you see how you're getting details from the clouds those are not there in the beginning the image looked like this let's say zero <clears throat> yeah there are some details of course but you'll see them better if uh, if you push this letter to the left all right <clears throat> and then if you have the Sun in the image you will always have uh, these little like small red marked areas where you have where the image is blown out but that's not important because the the light source is just behind it, it might be Sun it might be the light bulb whatever that's not important that's expected but you don't uh, you can't have blown out areas around okay so okay we fixed um, highlights now with shadows we need to brighten up the shadows we go to the shadow slider and push it to the right and suddenly you get all these details and color uh, in the palm trees right so that was not there before right it was like this and now we suddenly have green palm trees uh, when you do this uh, you might get some halo around shadows so be careful about that you don't want you don't want the image to look unnatural I'm not saying that you always have to push highlights completely to the left and shadows completely to the right find find a sweet spot because you might uh, get an effect maybe we see it here a little bit you see how the the, uh, the sea the ocean is a little bit darker in this area than around the palm trees so that's that's a halo you want to avoid that maybe I'll just push it a little bit to the left and then we can fix this later now the same thing for the blown out areas applies to the shadows just the color will be black let's say um, let's say I get this black slider and push it to the left you see how the deepest shadows become are becoming blue 
That's because we are losing details in the deepest shadows and you want to avoid that too. Because if the viewer sees that, if it goes to a shadow, uh, oh, there are no details there, it rejected. That's a rejection right away. So let's put black to zero and and uh, fix white white slider first. So I'm gonna push right white slider to the right a little bit, not too much, because as you can see, we are getting blown out areas more. So this is fine. For most images, when you don't have a light source in the image, you should not have any red spots. And that's important to know. So no red spots. If there is no sun in the image or a light bulb or anything like that, avoid red spots as much as possible for the for the shadows right now I don't see any blue any blue spots right oh yes here a little bit so I'm gonna push this lighter a little bit to the right there you go sometimes you will have to push left uh, black uh, slider to the left sometimes to the right but for our image this works so let's see before and after. So this is the original image, and this is the image that we just edited. Now you can just turn this off if you want to, if you want to <coughs> see how it looks like for real. <coughs> but if you want to edit it more, I would still keep these little two squares clicked. I want to add some vibrance to the image. See, when I do that, I can change, I can actually add some blown out areas, so be careful about that too. If that happens, just push the whites or highlights a bit to the left. There you go. Maybe a little bit more. There you go. I, I think we're fine with this. The difference between vibrance and saturation slider is that saturation is adding color everywhere. It's just adding saturation to all the areas of the image. Vibrance slider, however, works in a different way. It adds the colors only to the areas that have muted colors. So if you have anything that is a bright, saturated color in the image, that's not going to be changed. But if you have a dull sky or something like that, the vibrance will add some saturation to it. Now, I usually go to uh, this tab over here um, and uh, and click remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction these two usually work automatically I mean when you click this usually uh, if you have any kind of newer lens uh, Adobe has lens profiles built in this built into this camera raw so uh, the program will recognize the lens that you used and automatically uh, fix the image. However, my lens for this image was old and it's not listed, it's not tested. Um, so I have to choose manually the closest lens that resembles my lens. I know that my lens was Nikon and it wasn't Coolpix, it was uh, Nikkor and it was 18 to 150 but I'm sure we cannot find this lens since Adobe Camera Raw couldn't recognize it from the image so I'm gonna put something that's close to that like this one for example right and then when I do this I always check the image for color aberration color aberration is you probably noticed it and your image can get rejected because of that too. When you have, usually it happens around the edges of the dark objects against the bright sky. You, you can see, uh, let's say yellow line on this side of the leaf and green line of this, on this side, or it can be uh, reddish purple and blue. So that's color aberration. That's because the lens is not, um, bending all the wave uh, lengths of the light the same way. Uh, the better the lens, the less of the color aberration you're going to have. But, you know, sometimes we don't have money for lenses that are two, three thousand dollars. So, 
So this always comes handy. <clears throat> if you click this, remove uh, chromatic aberration, and uh, it doesn't fix the whole problem, then you can go to the manual tab and adjust it manually here. Just move this slider to the right, and then uh, the colors that you see here, you're trying to you try to match those colors to find those colors between these two sliders, right? Like this and just watch your image and you'll see the change. Right now we don't see any change because we actually don't really have a, col a chromatic aberration or color aberration. So I'm just gonna pull this slider to the left. And I think that's about it. We are kind of ready to import the image into, into Photoshop from Camera Raw. Let me just fix a little bit of this. This is too much blown out. So I'm gonna Pull whites to the left. That's it. Now, I mentioned that we're going to straighten up the horizon. I, we can do that here, or we can do it in Photoshop. Let me show you how to do it here. There is a tool here, this straighten tool. Just click on it, zoom a little bit, and then click anywhere on the horizon and drag with a mouse to the right we have a clear horizon here. Sometimes you will have mountains, so you will have to use your brain to kind of imagine where the horizon is, but in this case we can clearly see it, right? So I'm just gonna leave, uh, let uh, the mouse button, and this is gonna be our future image. Double click on it, and there you go. The horizon is straightened. So now, when we have image ready like this, I'm gonna click Open Image and the image is open in Photoshop. Now please let me know if you have any questions. Is everything so far clear? Um, before we proceed further. <clears throat> I'll wait a couple of seconds because as I mentioned there is uh, uh, the processing step that YouTube does, and um, you know, I you might hear the information with the delay, so it's okay. Just let me know if you have any questions. Okay, if no, then let's go. The next step now, well, now we imported the image into Photoshop, and the image is uh, placed here in this background layer. Um, you always want to add another layer to do your edits because when you change anything in this background layer you can just go certain number of undos to fix that but um, you will not be able to revert all the states all the steps that you did so to copy this layer to make another one that looks the same the shortcut on the keyboard is command J on Mac or control J on PC or you can just grab this layer and move it to this new layer icon and it says background copy you can name this layer uh, any way you want just double click on the name and rename it I'm not gonna do that because that's not really important for this tutorial so now I mentioned that I want to get rid of some things right so let me zoom control plus or command plus I'm gonna go to these leaves first and here on the left side you have all kinds of tools uh, these tools might look different in your case <clears throat> depending on the workspace that you chose or depending on the last tools that you used but if you can't find the tool that you need you see that most of these tools have this little triangle here at the corner that means that under this tool there are more tools similar tools hidden like tools from the same family so this is content aware move tool that's the tool i used the, the last but if i click on this arrow and hold and let leave let go i will have spot healing brush tool healing brush tool patch tool content aware move tool so all these tools do, do kind of a similar thing they remove things from your image for this purpose, for these leaves, I'm just gonna need a spot healing brush tool. 
and now I have to click on the layer that I want to work on which is the our copy layer not the background layer so watch for the layer that is active always to know what you where you're working so the background copy layer I'm gonna increase the size of the brush clicking on the right bracket or decrease clicking on the left bracket on the keyboard you can also do it here right the size uh, the tool is the brush is bigger right and then I'm just gonna do this because we don't need these leaves I mean you can leave them I'm not saying that it's that it's wrong as I mentioned before it's important what you want to do with the image not what um, other people tell you but I want to remove this so I'm gonna remove these people too okay sometimes when you work with these tools you might get um, a nasty effect that <laughs> looks like one uh, piece of the image where the Photoshop is sampling for uh, is being repeated over and over again try to avoid that if you see that then click again and again and again so so Photoshop could sample from another part of the image and erase that effect So here I'm gonna delete oh, these two people and this umbrella and this one this guy too and then these people as well so this is all done by using just the um, how is it called the spot healing brush tool that's the simplest tool that you can use from this family we're gonna remove this woman in a different way let's see if there are more people oh yes there is this person here just the head and I believe that's it for the rest of the image yes there is nothing else so let's remove this woman here I'm gonna zoom more now I can't really use spot healing brush tool here because if I do that well it might work we'll see let's say let's let's try ah, doesn't really look natural right so I'm gonna undo that control Z and I'm gonna use a different tool for this woman I'm gonna use this one this tool is like a stamp tool it also has a family of uh, other tools you have pattern stamp tool and clone stamp tool this is a clone stamp tool pattern will fill out the area with a certain pattern that you choose but uh, I'm gonna use clone stamp tool for now to clone from one area and paste it to another area so Trees, if I says, hey, can you make a YouTube logo for me, please? A YouTube logo? Sure, why not? <laughs> we can talk about it later. You can text me on, on Facebook. Just find me there on Instagram. Okay, so let's continue with removing this woman. Uh, I'm going to adjust the size of this tool. Like, I'm guessing this is going to be the right size. And then you press Alt, Alt, and the, the brush becomes like this and then you click once you just click once I clicked so you see now how I'm carrying the sample in the brush from this area so when you do that then go and just paint over the over the object that you want to remove like this now it might this might happen as you can see my uh, brush is now oh, sorry sampling from the edge on the left side you see that little cross so because it's sampling from the edge and there is nothing underneath I can't paint over this part of the image so I have to get another sample just click alt or option on Mac click a different area and just paint over this this uh, this little windows uh, show up because um, my in uh, windows ink workspace is active and uh, I forgot to disable it and I'm using the pen you can do this with a mouse I'm just using a pen because it's right now it's faster so we don't lose a lot of time although I mean removing object like this is quick with a mouse as well <clears throat> 
And now this little red part here looks weird. If you zoom out, you see? So I'm just gonna cover that by getting a sample from here, right? And then pasting it here. There you go. We can also fix a little bit of this red glow here that was from the from the woman's um, wardrobe. So I'm gonna get a sample from the tree, clicking Alt, and then just paint a little bit like this. There you go. I think that looks fine. Uh, you'll get used to these tools and you'll know exactly what to do and how to follow the lines and how to uh, remove the object to look natural. So we removed all the people. If we um, disable this layer here, I'm just going to click on, a, on this eyeball icon. So we removed all these people and everything from the bottom of the image, right? And those leaves as well. So right now, I want to copy this layer one more time because I want to save this just in case I don't like what I'm doing in a new layer. So I'm going to grab this layer, pull it down to the new layer icon and make, make another copy of it, right? Now the tool that, I'm, that I started using um, uh, recently and I really loved, love it is Photolemur. Photolemur is the, the application uh, created by Skylum Software. It costs maybe 30 something to $40 depending on, on the license if you're going to use it just yourself or the whole family where you can install it on four computers. But um, I became an affiliate of Skylum Software and if you use the link in the description of this video you're going to get uh, a discount. So you, um, you can get this tool for 20 something dollars and it's just one time payment. So it's not like Photoshop or uh, Lightroom where you have to pay every month. It's not subscri subscription based. It's just one payment and that's it. You, it's yours forever. What Photolemur does, it's based on artificial intelligence. It analyzes the image. It looks for the sky. It looks for faces. It looks for all these things and kind of know what's in the image and edits the image uh, the way it thinks is the best. As you can see, we have some uh, nicer contrast in the palm trees. So on the left side is before, on the right side is after, right? So I really like what this tool does. Um, sometimes you have a very, very hazy image and then you just load it in Photolemur and process it and in a couple of seconds you get a super contrasty, nicely saturated colors and all that. Um, so you can also adjust the strength of this effect if you click on this brush here. See? This is totally unprocessed and this is completely processed. These icons here, they are for portraits. If you have a portrait uh, as an image then you can enlarge eyes, you can uh, clean the skin and stuff like that. I mean, Photolimur does that all automatically for you. Don't you don't even even have to think about it. So let's say I like how this looks like. I'm just gonna click done, and Photolimur will uh, send the image back to Photoshop. Photolimur and all the Skylum software also works as a standalone application. You don't even have to use Photoshop. You can just use Photolimur and and Luminar 2018 or Aurora HDR, if you like Aurora images, oh, uh, I'm sorry, HDR images. So I'm, I'm really happy how this looks like now. A lot of contrast, nice colors. Let's zoom out. If I turn it off, this was before and this is after. Now let's say I'm going to, I'm going to rename this to Photolimer. Photolemur 3, so I know that that layer was edited in Photolemur. And now I'm going to show you another tool made uh, by Skylum Software that I'm using. It's also one, one time payment. Let me just copy this layer. So I'm, I keep repeating it's one time payment because really, I mean, if you're not earning substantial money from selling photos, 
I don't know if it pays off to pay for Adobe package because you have to pay a monthly you, you have a monthly payment once when you when you uh, start earning money every month you can at least cover those expenses which is like I don't know ten twelve dollars a month for most people in the Western Hemisphere that's not a lot of money for but for people who live in countries where uh, the salaries are smaller that can be actually a lot so if you pay just once and the software is yours and you can use it always I prefer that to to the subscription plan although I pay for both I mean I bought Skylum software and uh, I'm paying for Adobe packages um, monthly so this one we're gonna uh, add it in Luminar Luminar 2018 and uh, that is also st either standalone application or you can enable a plugin for Photoshop. I tried editing some images only in Luminar and it was fantastic. It's I think it's it's very good. It's like a blend between uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. It has layers like Photoshop, but it has filters like Lightroom, so it's really interesting. So this is Luminar 2018. Uh, you have this button add filters uh, if you click on that you will get a bunch of filters here and what you can do with them is basically limitless it's just your imagination you have essential filters here uh, oh yeah they have also uh, artificial intelligence based filter which I like a lot when you click it you see what it does with the image we don't need to brighten up that much but let's say let's keep it like this and then you add more filters and all those filters basically belong to this layer and then you can add another layer and add new filters and go on forever and whatever you do when you save the file the history is also saved so later when you open the file the whole history will be there and you will still be able to undo whatever you did the previous time which is awesome uh, so let's say I just want to add I just want to add some sun rays so they have this um, creative part creative family of filters and there is sun rays here when I click that the filter is added and you can see that some sun rays from here so it's a wrong position we have to place sun center place sun center put it here I think that's kind of a good position right kind of looks natural I'm gonna increase the warmth of the sun rays because it's sunset and I'm gonna decrease the amount a little bit and maybe the length as well the look okay the number this looks fine and the radius you can increase it decrease it Actually, when I decrease the 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 size, the radius, I can see where I can place it better. Okay, now I can put it back a little bit like this. Glow radius. Also, so there is a lot of a lot of um, sliders just for this filter, right? Add some warmth, and I'm actually happy. Let's see what if we can add some more details in the clouds here so there was one filter called microstructure I'm trying to find it there you go pay attention to the clouds because I'm pushing it right you see that if I I mean this is overdone of course I just want to show you how it works <laughs> So there is a question, can you edit one image with Luminar only? Uh, yes, of course you can. I mean, of course I can. Uh, for this session, um, I... Um, Skylum software. Oh yes, you can. I mean, you can use... Uh, for me, to be honest, Luminar is... Uh, the question is, sorry, when I when I said Luminar, I meant Skylum software. Luminar, Aurora, and Photolimer. Yes, you can. Um, if you use only... If you use only uh, Photolimer, you will not have a lot of options because Photolimer does everything automatically for you but what Photolimer is good for is that when you load the image you click the button and you have optimized colors optimized contrast 
uh, sharpness and all that. So the image suddenly looks great, right? The worse it looks, the worse the original looks, the better the processed image looks like. But the only thing that you can influence is click a couple of buttons and adjust that slider for the strength of the effect. I use Photolimer only to automatically process the colors and the contrast and all that. You can all that do in uh, Camera Raw, Adobe Camera Raw or um, Lightroom, but it will take longer time. And probably you will not edit it exact, to look exactly the same way. I, was, I, I tried doing it and uh, I'm not saying that Lightroom is bad or Camera Raw is bad, no, far from that, of course. But uh, when I process it through through Luminar, it takes only a couple uh, through uh, Photolimer, it takes only a couple of seconds, and uh, I don't even think about it. I just press done, and that's it. Uh, Luminar is much more complex, as you can see. There is a lot of filters. Um, they recently introduced this filter um, that's called AI Sky Enhancer, which enhances only sky, and it works great. It knows where the sky is and uh, when you click on that you can just add details and all that you have masks you have layers and you can process the image just in luminar aurora hdr you can do the same thing but aurora hdr is only for hdr images it can make well for those who don't know what um, hdr image is hdr stands for high dynamic range image which means that you know when we had all films old films like uh, 3.5, uh, 35 millimeter films, for example, they have a layer of substance on them that is very photosensitive, and it was basically impossible to blown out the sky. If you, if <laughs> you would have to really mess mess up the the exposure to lose the details in the shadow or to lose the details in the sky, but with digital cameras, sensors are digital; they are not analog. So they have a certain number of tones that they can show, and that's far less than the, the regular film. So we often see blown out sky, most often that, right? But with HDR images, you, you're ex expanding that range of tones that you can uh, present with your camera. True HDR is when you take at least three images, one with the, right, with the correct exposure, uh, the other one with uh, shorter exposure and the, the other one with longer exposure. So three images at least. You can have five or ten, doesn't matter. So when you load them in the software, any software, Aurora HDR or Photoshop, they blend these three images, take the best tones from each image and create the image that has all the details in the highlights, all the details in the shadows and all the mid-tones. So that's a true HDR image. Aurora HDR can also create um, to simulate um, HDR image just from one image that you load. So it will create HDR effect, but of course it will be a little bit if you have three images with different exposures. But that's what you can do with Aurora. I mean, there is a lot of filters too, but it's all focused on HDR. Luminar is the software that you can use just to edit images and, and uh, to add layers like in Photoshop, uh, to add filters like in um, um, Lightroom or Camera Raw, you can also remove objects. So I think Luminar is the, the most complete and it costs, I believe, $70, something like that. But if you use the link that I provided you with my coupon, you get $20 off. So I think it's going to be a, around $50 or something like that. And basically you don't need anything else that's it so um, now when I'm let's say I'm happy with the image let me just switch off my view uh, I'm gonna click apply and the image will be sent back to Photoshop the process there you go so this is the image made with Luminar 2018 this is the image when I switch off the view so you can see that layer right there is the image made with Photolimer. If I switch that off, this is the image made in uh, uh, Camera Raw and after removing the objects. And this is the image that we imported from Camera Raw. So now, what's important to 
to remember about stock images. This is about the size that customers will see when they are buying images. When they are browsing for the images, that's what they will see. For a long time, I was making a mistake not zooming out the image before I save it. And when you zoom it in, when you look at 100%, in Photoshop you look for this number here, now it says 8.33, zoom it to 100% by clicking Control or Command Plus. And I was looking like this, I was watching the image, okay, it looks good, it's nice. There are colors, nice colors and all that. But in the end, on this size, you might see the, all the tones and contrast looks good and all that. But when you zoom it out, the image kind of looks dead. Let me show you. If I switch off the visibility for this layer, see this? Would anybody buy this? Maybe, but maybe not. Because the image doesn't really stand out. Zoom it to 5% or something like that to see how it looks as a thumbnail. This looks much better, right? So this image, this thumbnail will probably uh, attract the attention of the customer. But this one will probably not. And that's where I was mistaken for years. I would save the image and then when I started using these couple tools, I started selling much more because um, Photolimur and Luminar add that contrast and that pop so image image stands out among other thumbnails. Now I mentioned that I want to I mentioned the halo before if you remember you see this part of the ocean here like this it's a bit dark compared to other parts plus there is this white halo a oh, white halo light halo around the palm tree kind of looks unnatural. You can easily fix this. Let me show you how. You add a new layer, an empty layer. So this is empty layer. You'll see the thumbnail with these little gray and white squares. And on this layer, you have to change the mode for this layer. So this layer is selected and here it says normal. Just click here and use soft light. I also made a couple of videos about these modes for layers, so you can watch that and, and learn more how to use them. Eventually, when you start using them, you immediately know what you need to use in what situation. In this situation, I need soft light. Now, I'm gonna grab, well, white color is already enabled, and I'm gonna zoom more, drag the image to see this pla that place, then get the regular brush, with the soft edge, so hardness should be zero. Increase the size of a brush a little bit. Okay, that's good. And now just paint over the image, only that darker part, okay? Just like this. Now, this looks too much, and it is too much. What I wanna do is first adjust the, the edge of this, so it looks more natural. For this, I'm gonna click, uh, where's the eraser? Here, eraser. Make it a little bit bigger than the previous brush and just erase these parts here that were already bright. Like this. There you go. Like this. And now, this layer is still active. I'm gonna click the opacity slider and just pull it back to the left. Maybe a little bit more. There you go. Now if I switch the visibility off, you see the difference? So we kind of, you know, tricked, did a little trick to hide this dark area here. Right? Maybe this is even too much. Let's just decrease the, the opacity a little bit more. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, I have to increase. You see, when you zoom out, you actually see better some things. So always keep zooming in, zooming out until you, you know, discover what's wrong with the image. Now, uh, whenever you add 
any kind of HDR detail or um, as I um, added microstructure before you have to check out for the noise the noise you can't really see a lot of it now because I'm kinda you know experienced with it but if you zoom more you see the grain that's called noise and reviewers don't want to see this or they want to see a little bit of it but not you know not too much so now I zoom to 200 percent to show you this reviewers will not review your images at 200 percent zoom they will use only 100 percent so if we go back to 100 percent well, the image looks nice I mean I would not I would not be worried about this noise I don't know what this is this little line I really don't want don't know what that is so I'm gonna remove it oops sorry I have to use the layer see when you use the empty layer nothing is changing but if I click the layer that's actually visible underneath I'm gonna do this and maybe is it this one no that's fine check your images for spots for uh, dust sensor dust you will recognize sensor dust they it looks like um, blurry darker spots usually in the sky you will not really see sensor dust here because there's a lot of things going on there but in the sky you can find them often and uh, just remove them with the spot healing brush tool because your image can get rejected because of that okay let me show you how to um, remove the noise from the image even though we don't have a lot of noise here click on the layer the last layer so so this one I don't even count because that's just that little you know brighten up area that we did so click on this layer go to filter and go back to camera raw filter okay I'm gonna switch this off we're not gonna use this and we're gonna use only only this tab here called detail let's zoom more so we can see what's going on this is 200 percent zoom again you don't have to do this I'm just wanna I just wanna show you how to remove the noise there is a noise reduction tab usually the only problem that you will have with the image is luminance noise not really color noise so let's just push this a little bit to the right there you go that's that's enough that's enough just click OK and your image will be returned to Photoshop without noise you can zoom 200% there is no noise some of it has to be there naturally but this is not a problem at all okay let's say this is our final edited image what I always do is save PSD file let's say call it palm trees palm trees PSD save if your computer is not stable it's always good to do this save process during the editing so every couple of steps of editing just click save and you know so you don't lose uh, you don't lose what you did then I go to file file info and I put the copyright status I put dream framer you can put your name here and this or whatever your a alias or whatever uh, this is really not important I'm just doing it I don't know why because <laughs> I just want the information to be there but you know a lot of uh, uh, people who upload their images on the internet um, the software just um, deletes all this information from here so your copyright info will be deleted however that doesn't mean that you don't have the copyright over the image it's still your image and you're still the copyright owner and you can always prove it because you have the first version of the image so don't be alarmed 
if you if you find out that you know you download your image from the internet use them some website and then you see you load it to Photoshop and it says that you know nobody's the copyright owner that doesn't mean that you lost the copyright and Shutterstock and other websites where you're selling photos have this information too so they know that you are the one who uploaded the image and they can always if you report or somebody reports uh, whoever you know stole the image God forbid from you uh, can be actually punished but I really in these 10 years I personally didn't have any problems I didn't have any case like that but I still like to put this because people who use the full version of the image or they want to keep this uh, data about the image the copyright will be there so you don't have to add the title you don't have to add, add description or keywords just click OK and click Save again. And now, this is only what I'm doing. You don't have to do it again. What I do is I resize the image to uh, 6.4 megapixels minimum. I always put a little bit above because I, I sell on many websites and uh, um, some of the websites are accepting images that are only 4 megapixels big like Shutterstock some of the uh, websites even less but there are websites where I sell uh, that don't accept images smaller than uh, 6.4 megapixels so I basically um, I basically resize my images to 6.5 megapixels you don't have to do that um, you know that when you upload the image to Shutterstock, Shutterstock makes different sizes of your image and if you have a big image you might sell it for a little bit more money but what I noticed is that especially when you have a, a cell phone image or you have an image uh, taken with the lens that is not really good or you have an image with some noise when you shrink it when you make it smaller you improve the noise you improve the sharpness and you get a higher acceptance rate some people don't do this and I I was not doing it until maybe uh, three years ago um, but since then my acceptance rate rate really jumped uh, and I'm get, guessing that that's one of the reasons right it's not just experience because you can take a good image but if the reviewer uh, thinks that the image is blurry or has noise they're gonna reject it so um, to resize the image if you want to do it you go to image and image size oh wait uh, I hit the menu so you go to image and image size and then you have to be careful I mean to take uh, to pay attention here it has to say pixels and then the size of the images megapixels you get when you multiply these two numbers so I'm gonna use the calculator on my phone for this so I'm going to multiply 3765 3765 times 2520 2520 and that's almost 10 megapixels 9.4 so I'm going to decrease this a little bit. Let's say I'm going to put this, uh, change this uh, to 2,200. This also, this link has to be active. Otherwise, if you change the size here, the width will not be changed and the image, the final image will be stretched. So let's multiply now. 3,287, 3,287 times 2200 that's 7.2 megapixels so we can go even lower let's say 2100 3138 times 2100 okay that's 6.5 6.6 megapixels something like that so I'm just gonna click OK so the image is a little bit shrink now and um, I'm not gonna save a PSD file again I don't want to save the PSD file for the shrinked image because if I need to 
re-edit this, if I need to resubmit this for some reason, it's always better to work on the original size. Because when you resize it to the smaller one, you lose some things, right? So this time I'm going to click File, Save As, and click JPEG, Palm Trees JPEG, Save. The quality is the maximum, and just click OK. Now I'm going to turn this off. Photoshop will ask me if I want to uh, save changes in palm trees.psd, which is the original Photoshop file. I say no, because I might need it in the future. Now we have a question um, Shutterstock versus Alamy, which one is best? Um, that's like asking if apples or pears are better. They are different. Um, I earned the most on Shutterstock, uh, but Shutterstock um, gives you gives me thirty six cents per image. If it's subscription, right? Of course, you have extended license and you have on demand sales and single sales and stuff like that, which are better, of course. But mm, like the the vast majority of images is sold uh, on the as a, as a subscription. So Shutterstock sells a lot, but you get this much money. Alamy, on the contrary, when you sell an image, it's sold for 10, 15, 50, 100, 200, 500 dollars, depending on the license. And uh, uh, I sell less on Alamy, of course, but in the recent, in the last couple of months, I sold three images. So it wasn't bad at all. Um, I have less images on Alamy than on Shutterstock because Alamy also has one thing that I don't really like, which is the reviewing process. Let's say you have 10 images in a batch and you upload them to Alamy. They go to the reviewers. Uh, you don't do anything uh, between uploading and, uh, and the review process. So you don't add images to categories. You don't check for your keywords, nothing. You just send the images the reviewer takes the images, those 10 images you, that you sent, and they don't check all of them. So if they check a couple of images that are not good, they will reject the whole batch. I don't really like that, but you know, for that reason, I always make sure that all the images that I sent to Alamir are good. And uh, since I used to be a reviewer, I know what to look for. Um, the size for the Alamy 6.4 megapixels is fine, so I don't send bigger than that because some of my previous batches were rejected because of the they were kind of soft and stuff like that. So um, the difference, I mean, on Shutterstock is different, right? You upload the images, and if it's 10 images, they're gonna review each image, maybe reject some of them, accept some of them, but Alamy will just reject everything if if they find one image that doesn't fulfill their requirements. So I think they are both good because sometimes you sell on Alamy something for $200. Uh, for Shutterstock you need to sell a lot of images for that money, right? But then volume wise Shutterstock sells more and you get some money every day. So that's the difference. I don't know which one is better. Some people say that Alamy works best for them. Um, for me it doesn't but it's among the top five. Okay, so let's get back to to our image. So I don't know. Uh, l let me know. Let me let me know if you want me to now import the image and add keywords to it and uh, show you how I keyword images, or you want me to edit one more image in Photoshop. And I'll wait for you to tell me. And then I'll do that. Okay, let's then add keywords to our image. So I use for keywording, I use the app called uh, Xpix. The app is free. If you just Google it, you're gonna find it. Uh, when you load it, um, when you uh, now Nuno says edit one in Luminar without Photoshop. Nuno, can we do that maybe next time? Um, I'll do this most likely next week. 
just connect with me guys uh, on Instagram or find my uh, page on um, on Facebook and uh, I'll post it there I don't really want to bother people a lot with uh, my live videos in uh, our Shutterstock group because you know I don't want to be pretentious or whatever so if you find my Facebook page um, I will post all my future live videos on there let me just show people how to keyword the images okay webinar so this was our original image I loaded it to to um, XPix and now I'm gonna add a title here the title might be uh, palm trees at sunset and the description should be at least seven words let's say um, palm trees at sunset in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. XPix will warn you uh, if you have misspelled words, like this is misspelled obviously, but these um, Puerto Vallarta, the Puerto Vallarta is Spanish, so um, you know, XPix will think that this is a misspelled word, but it, actually it's not. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can also add something longer like um, Puerto Vallarta is uh, is a famous tourist town in Mexico on the Pacific coast and it's known by beautiful sunsets okay and now keywords click in the keywords box and click suggest keywords now here I use Shutterstock as the search engine and photos instead of all images photos and then say palm trees sunset so you type like the, the most important keywords for your image and click search There you go. Then you try to find uh, images that are most similar to your image. Let's say this one, and of course, you search the in the images that are on top. So this one and this one. Let's say the keywords that overlap between these two images will be set in the top box, and keywords that are different will be set in the in the lower box maybe we can add one more but that's okay this is enough for for now and now you go through these keywords and you say vacation you just look for keywords that don't really match your image so you can remove them vacation palm retro holiday tropical summer vintage travel sundown heaven nature Malaysia okay pink purple do we have any pink not really not really purple either Sky, Freedom, Miami, it's not Miami. Sea, Filter, Silhouette, Background, Sunrise, Paradise. Yeah, this could be also Sunrise. I mean, not in Puerto Vallarta, but somebody might just look for Sunrise images. doesn't matter where they're from. Uh, paradise Style, Thailand, uh, Day, Romantic Beach, Leaf, uh, Sunset. And this is not really a beach, but palm trees can be on the beach, so that's okay. Landscape, Caribbean. Tropic, Goa, Season, Beautiful Tree, Journey, Ocean, Wallpaper, Outdoor, Correction, what is Correction? <laughs> I'm just going to remove that, Tourism, Abstract Jungle, Color, Island, could be Island, whatever, Sun, Instagram, I'm not going to put that, that's, uh, that's a brand, so I don't know, I have no idea how this keyword managed to, to pass through the review, or maybe the 
contributor added the keyword later after I mean I would not do that because Instagram is a brand photo okay now we have 39 keywords let's add them add suggested click close and then we can add some keywords manually here you have the count of the keywords so Puerto Vallarta Mexico Pacific Coast what else can we add sun rays sun rays actually is that two words we can do this maybe sun oh. when you type the keyword that exists uh, the xpix will remove it rays let's try to add sun rays right now sun rays. Uh, even though it's misspelled, some people might search for that. 45 keywords. Uh, blue, yellow, orange. 48. That's enough. Now you click here, select the image, click Save, Confirm, Start Export, and now you can upload this image to different websites where you are selling um, photos so right now I have quite a bit quite a few websites I'm not gonna click upload now because that might mess up my live streaming because it's gonna take from the speed of the internet so I'm gonna click close but um, I have a video about XPX that explains how to set all this up and how to actually make it work so I'm going to click close now and go back to my camera and uh, and I think that's it for now guys it's been one hour and 15 minutes and uh, I think that I hope that you found this interesting and um, I promise next time I'm going to edit one image only in Luminar uh, and I'll let you know on my on my um, web page on my Facebook page right so let me know if you have any questions send me an email um, contact me on Facebook and uh, hope to see you soon hope to see you soon and next time we'll do Luminar 2018 one image only in Luminar and that's it for now um, see you soon bye Thank you.